Okay, before we start this tutorial, you can take a look at this blog post. Uh, it's about the triply periodic minimal surfaces, and it's a great one. You can just take a look at it. It's a, a recent post uh, about minimal surfaces. And what I want to do is to use this gyroid step-by-step uh, -step in Grasshopper and produce that with Millipede plugin. So you have to install the Millipede plugin. I will also put it in the description so you can download that and also the Vivable plugin. We have to combine that as we go forward. Okay, so about the gyroid surface, what I want to explain, and uh, especially about the ISO surfaces, is that if you look at this uh, equation, that means any point on this surface, if we extract, let's just bring it here, if we extract its x, y, and z, and then put it in this formula, we'll have a zero, okay? So those points on the gyroid surface will always will be inserted in this uh, formula, cosine uh, x, sine y, and till the end, and then if you just add them up, you will have zero, okay? So how can we do that in Grasshopper? The most important thing is that this ISO surface tool, which you can find in the millipede section, and here in the geometry, we have this ISO surface tool, uh, gets the value and gives you the mesh. So what we need here is how uh, can we write the formula here and then connect it to this ISO surface and bring out the mesh, okay? Uh, what I have to do is to go to the mathematics section, math, and select this evaluate tool, okay? So if you zoom in, you can see that this can have different variables. I'm going to add another one and name this one, right click on it and name it X. Let's name this a Y and let's name this a Z. Okay, you can double click on this evaluate tool and write your uh, equation here or you can just give that equation to the expression. So what I want to do is to double click here and write a panel, use a panel here and give it to the expression and we can just type in the equation here. I'm going to copy this and paste it in the panel and here you can see that it's completely fine. The most important thing about Grasshopper is that you have to write multiplication with stars. So I'm going to use a shift and an eight to write stars between these multiplications and here we have another one. That's the equation, okay? So those points have to come into this expression and then go to the value. The first thing about this isosurface is to have to give this the values and you can use this technique for any isosurface. Okay, the next part is to define uh, numbers and give them to the x, y, z. What we usually do when we have these cosines and sines is to define a range, let me show you here, a range of numbers which is starting from minus pi to pi but that really depends on the equation but for the gyroid we're going to use this minus pi to pi okay and then we're going to use that in a box of space because remember we have to put that point in this x y and z and get a zero so what we have to do is to make a space of full of numbers what we want to do is to make a range and and you can see that we have a domain so i'm going to right click on this and set a domain from minus pi which is pi to pi okay commit change so we have a domain from minus pi to pi let's define a division maybe 20 is fine if you increase that it's going to make it slower but that's okay okay so assume that we have a number a series of numbers starting from minus pi to pi uh, what we have to do is to give that to x y and z if I want to visualize that if we go to the vector and use a point construct point if I give this to the x y and z what you can see that it is not a complete series of point that is because the first number, is, which is minus pi, uh, will go to, let me just show you here, minus pi, minus pi for y, and minus pi to z. And that's going to go like this, uh, those points are going to be produced. So what we need here is a great tool called cross, 
reference, which you can combine all of these to produce this uh, cloud of points. So if we have three inputs here, we're going to zoom in and put it a plus here. Let's just name it X, Y, and Z so you can understand it better. What we want to do is to put that into X, Y, Z. And the reason we are doing this is that it's going to put all the combination of minus pi to pi to these points. So this is just for visualization and uh, so you can understand that. So what we want to do is to give that to the X, Y, and Z. That's all we have to do. We can also decrease that if you want to make it faster. And that is the values of the ISO surface. Let's just delete these points. The next step is after we give this uh, results of this function to the values, we also have to define a box so that mesh or the uh, gyroid is going to be in that box. We can go to the surface in the primitive. I'm going to use a simple box here. We can use the center box simply by giving it a center box and give it a number to the x, y, and z. Okay, that's not really important. This is a scaling thing for the final results. So I'm going to give that to the box. Okay, the next step is the x resolution, y resolution, and the z resolution. When I just made those points by giving this x, y, and z reference, uh, as I decrease these numbers, I'm going to explain that. You can see when I give this a uh, five, what's, uh, those points are going to go into one, two, three, four, five, six rows, okay? So it's going to be six, six, and six in the x, y, z direction. So if we want to give this in the resolution x, y, z, we'll have to add it up by one. We're going to go to the mass section, add it by one, and give that as the resolution for the x, y, and Z. Okay. And remember, we have to increase the number of the steps so it's going to get a better results of the mesh. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's just delete these points and turn off the box. And here you can see that this is the gyroid we have added here. You can simply even add a, another equation, maybe 2 multiplied by uh, cosine, and you can see it's going to change the results. Okay, so remember, you can always uh, change the equation here. Uh, the next step here is the ISO value. It's usually zero, and I'm going to give it a zero here. You can increase that, but it's going to, uh, let me just show you by a small number, maybe. You can see that's going to change the overall shape, but zero is the uh, exact shape, and then it's going to offset that inside or make the surface. Okay, uh, another problem with this, uh, millipede plugin is that when I give it a zero, you can see that it's going to give you an invalid mesh. Okay, to make that uh, and fix this, you can increase that by just a one. Uh, maybe we just give this a 0 0.001 and give that to the ISO value. Let's just delete this one, and you can see that this is going to give you a complete mesh. So remember, if you give uh, get an invalid mesh here as the output, just increase that. Uh, by uh, 1000 doesn't really matter what you have you don't have to give that as just a zero okay uh, the merge vertices that means it has to merge everything together it's going to use a toggle so I'm going to use a toggle and put it to true so it's going to join everything together you can see that it's going to join it and make it a smooth mesh okay so that was the way you can make a gyroid in grasshopper using the millipede plugin it's really simple if i just hit Control m or go to the display and preview the mesh edges off you can see that this is the smooth results and let's just bake this so you can see it okay that's it if you want to make a complete uh, array of that we can just go and use an array box array is fine because it's in 3d and I'm going to array this mesh the cell is going to be basically that box because it's defined the x y and z and then we can define the number of the x count y count or z count so maybe we want to start from 1 to 8 and we want to control that in the x 
uh, y and z direction okay so you can see that we can increase that in the x direction y direction and the z direction that's it uh, another important thing here is that if i bake that uh, these meshes are not joined so now we're going to use the vivable plugin to join that you can go to the vivable plugin and use this uh, join mesh and weld I'm going to join these meshes and remember to right click on the weld and set it to true and it's going to make it uh, a complete mesh here okay so this is going to connect it together uh, another thing you can do is to let's just decrease the numbers here and maybe we want to give it a thickness so we can go to the VVB plugin and use this mesh thicken give it here and just give it a small number for the distance and control its thickness okay uh, you can make it with thickness if I go to the rendered mode you can see that this is going to give it a thickness if you want, want to make it smoother as you can see here it's a little bit of a facet one so what I want to do is to go to the okay let's just go back before we make it as a box array, I'm going to go here. What you can do is to go to the Vivo plugin and use this Laplacian smoothing, okay? Give it to the mesh and put the smooth naked edges to the fixed one, which means it's not going to change the edges, and then give it maybe 20 times of levels, okay? It's going to make it smoother. If I bake this, this is the difference between the base mesh and the smooth one okay so here you can see it it's going to make it smoother and you can use that to uh, bring it back to the array and those things another thing you can do before you make it a thickened one you can go to the viva and use this loop subdivision to make it smooth so i'm going to give that and maybe just give it two times to put that into fixed so it doesn't change places just play with this fixed and corner fixed based on the mesh you want and then you can give it a thickness so that's the way you can use also the Viva plugin to make a smoother result and let's just close this one you can see if I go to the rendered section you can see it's going to be smoother and give you better results okay so that was the way you can use the uh, Viva plugin and also the millipede to produce the base mesh as you just uh, watched here and produce the gyroid in Grasshopper. And you can also, if you want to know more about ISO surfaces or about mathematical surfaces, we have a lesson in our course. You can also enroll in our course. I will put it up here if you want to know more about it. Just watch that and enroll in our course if you want to know more about uh, mathematical surfaces. Thanks for watching and see you next time.